In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory. It's been 40 days since we gathered here to celebrate that great and glorious and holy and beautiful and bright night of the Pascha. For 40 days we've greeted each other with Christ is risen and with the response, indeed he is risen. And we've said it in many, many languages. We've tried to learn a few new ones here this year. We've had new friends come that speak different languages than we've ever used before. And now, now that we have been through the great school that the Pascha season gives to us, it's time to begin the next part of our journey. And I say that Pascha has been a school in much the same way that Great Lent was a school for us also. In Great Lent, we become, we close the doors for just a little while. We listen to hymnography and teaching and lives of saints and we celebrate Sundays that remind us that we need to repent and turn away from a world of sinfulness and turn to a life in Christ. And through Pascha, we see how for those who have chosen to have Christ at the center of their lives, those who have changed who they are in response to the gospel message, we've seen what they have gone and done after that. They've become great saints that we have followed. They have become apostles. They have become evangelists and people that had the Pascha message so completely in their hearts, so fully overtaking their lives that they ran out. And we are being prepared for just such a thing. And by ran out, I just want to, let me finish that sentence. They ran out to go and share that message with everybody. So on the 40th day, after Christ's rising from the dead, the apostles were gathered together again, and he appeared to them, and he says, peace be unto you. This guy who they'd seen crucified on a cross, but then subsequently seen him rising from the dead, shows up among them and says, peace be unto you. Now, if this happened to us right now, if somebody came and appeared who was, had been dead for a little while, I don't think peace would be the emotion we would be having, right? Be a little freaked out. But that's not what happened to Christ. He rose from the dead. He has promised that those sins that he took away on the cross were dead forever, and even he himself would be alive and give life to his people. He speaks about how the scriptures said that he would do all these things. Going back through the Old Testament, we see that it is constantly telling us that the Christ is coming. He will suffer. He will take away the sins of the world. He will bring all of humanity back up to the way we were supposed to be. Sinless. Friends of the Lord himself. And then when he was with the apostles that night... On the day of the ascension, he says, Then he opened, their under, he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, that it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. All of these things were known for thousands of years before Christ was born in that cave in Bethlehem. If only our eyes were open to see. So now at the end of his earthly ministry, he gathers his friends together and he goes out to that same mountain, same mountain where he'd prayed with them many times before. And here, just so clearly, just the last three verses of the Gospel of Luke. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. I don't know what that looked like. And it doesn't seem like they had words to describe the beauty of what was happening. The Lord who was here with them, who suffered death, who was hungry, and we saw that just a little while before that he ate the honeycomb and the broiled fish. The Lord who had been through all of the things with us now was going from earth to heaven. A, a sign from him that the humanity that he took on himself the human body, the human mother, the human 
feelings of hunger and thirst and tiredness. They were all fulfilled. They were all completed. All of those things that he had done, he had done his human life, <clears throat> excuse me, perfectly, as only God could. And now, because he had perfected, perfected humankind, he took that human body, just like you and I have, a little less body fat than what I have, I'm sure, and he took it and it ascended into heaven. Think about it. In the entirety of the universe, if we include heaven in that just for the sake of the argument, a human person resides in the kingdom of heaven in the person of Jesus Christ. He has blazed a path so that we also, in our resurrected state, when that day comes, when the end of time comes, we can also become citizens of the kingdom of heaven, but only because the first fruits of God, the first fruits of Mary, were there first, Christ himself. And St. Luke says, And they worshipped him, and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. That should be such a joyous message. Christ has risen from the dead. Christ has ascended from earth to heaven. And because he loves us so dearly, he wishes to take us with him. So we return to Jerusalem. We turn, return to the heavenly city with great joy. Sure, he's not here right now in a physical sense. But he is with us. He has made his home in our hearts. He has made us his own body and blood. So we can live for eternal life. And the last verse. And they were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. That's all we're called to do. And everything flows from that. Christ has taken on a human form and he has saved us. And in response, we are continually in the temple praising and blessing God. As often as we can in this temple, this building which happens to stand here, but in the temple of our hearts constantly praising God, blessing him for all of the great gifts he has given us. Everything you have, every great gift Every blessing flows from Him. And our only attitude should be thankfulness. That's why, standing on that mountain, watching their friend, their God, Jesus Christ, be carried up into the heavens, that's why they were able to return with great joy. There's a great joy that He has loved us so much that he has come here and taken on all of our frailty and sufferings and even death. It is a great joy that through that death he has risen from the dead and taken us from this kingdom of this world to the kingdom of heaven. Today we also celebrate a great king and queen, St. Constantine equal to the apostles and his mother also equal to the apostles and the patron saint of several of the wonderful ladies here with us today. St. Helen believed in this story so much that she prayed for her son to be converted. St. Helen had such great joy in her heart that when she had freedom to do so, she went to Jerusalem to see all of the holy places where Christ had done his salvific work. The cross for her was not a symbol of death, it, it was a sign of us being raised from death to new life. She was in Jerusalem and she found the true cross and she raised it up for all to see. Not so that we could see a place where a criminal had been executed, but so that that same God, Jesus Christ, who had ascended from earth to heaven, was raised up to bless all of the people with the outstretching of his arms. St. Helen's piety, pure faith, has given us a Jerusalem that we can return to. 
we can return to the very same places where Christ's cross was planted, where he was put into the tomb, where his mother walked down to go and weep for him, and where the cross laid for 300 years. But it's not about the places, which are very good in themselves, but it's about having a Jerusalem to return to, a place where God is reigning, his capital city. And he wants to make that each of us, in our own hearts. You can take Jerusalem with you. The story of the ascension means that Christ has moved into our hearts. Have we left him a clean house in which to move into? All of that is, don't get me wrong, in conjunction with the fact that we worship together as the family of Christ. St. Helen built and began to build a beautiful church so that we could go and remember and celebrate and honor the things that Christ has done for us. And from Jerusalem, we have built churches in almost every city throughout time, marching across the face of the earth, bringing the gospel message, bringing the story of the ascension, that Christ took our human bodies and he will make them perfect, he will resurrect them again. He brought them up to heaven because the message spread as he said it would from the place where he was crucified, from the place where he was resurrected, right now down to Johnson City, Brookdendale, Ithaca, and Lansing. All those places we live, the message has gone on from where it happened to where we are now because that joy that they had in the first century has carried throughout all the years of the, of the church and we have caught it. We celebrate with great joy that our Lord has ascended from earth to heaven that he will take away all of the diseases both physical and spiritual that divide us from him. May we celebrate this great feast with great joy as the first apostles did. May we celebrate this great feast seeing that the sicknesses that we suffer now, physical, emotional, spiritual, have been defeated. We suffer them a little while longer so that we may purify our souls and become better people. But we have seen the promise. Death has been destroyed. Hell, Hades, has been overthrown. Humankind, men and women, have been brought up from earth to heaven because Christ has ascended and wishes to take all of us with him to his heavenly kingdom. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, glory to Jesus Christ.